Greetings, programmers. Busted Thumbs back again for episode number seven of creating our Make a, make a Memory game tutorial. And with me once again is my great companion, Fluffy Witches. Hello! And I know we left off in the last one with a little bit of a problem, didn't we? Yep. What was going on? We tried to lay out all the tiles on the screen, and for some reason only one of them was showing up, and we didn't know why, but we'd run out of time. And so we get to do the fun and exciting work of debugging today. Debugging is something that all programmers do all the time, so it's just something we need to get used to. And it's just it's just another bit of the puzzle. It's fun to do. Maybe, maybe uh, you were playing along and making your own memory game, and you already know what's going wrong, but I have to figure it out right now. And I'm going to show you how I often go about trying to figure out what's going wrong. What I tend to do, because Scratch doesn't, in a lot of programming languages, they have ways of helping you find out what's going on. Scratch doesn't have a lot of that. So I kind of have to work with the system that I have, and I tend to make a variable that I call debug message. And it tells me what's going on in my program. I make it for all sprites, and I'm going to want it to tell me whether or not I'm making all these clones the way that I think I am. I think that I'm creating when I do when I do the small size I'm creating 12 of these and that they're the my column and my row is changing on them every single time I do that. Uh, but in order for me to do that I, and check that that is actually the case I'm going to going to go in here and make sure that that is really what I'm doing. So I want to set my debug message. Every time I go into this loop that's happening over and over again I want my debug message to grow and indicate to me that I've actually created a clone that has the column and row that I think it has inside of it. And the way we do that is we use this debug message and all the variables that we've used before have been numbers I believe but this time it's going to be text and, and text variables we refer to as strings. And there are some operators that work on strings. And they're down here, they're in the operators section and there's these three right here, join, letter of, and length of. We're going to use join. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to make sure that I just make my debug message get bigger and bigger. And the way I do that is to join debug message to itself. What join set means is take the thing on the left and put the thing on the right next to it at the end. So just put them together. So it was saying hello world, and I was going to say, and you put join of hello world, it would have said well, hello world. If you join debug message and something, it's going to take the thing that used to be in debug message and add the thing at the end. So what this guy, if I were to run this, every time my loop would go over and over again, it would go world, 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 world for every number of time that I put that debug message in. Well, that's, that doesn't help me very much. What I want, actually, is to see the row and column. So I'm going to start joining a bunch of things together here. I'm going to put three more of these guys, these joins in. Join, 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 join. What I want to do is separate each one with a dash. I'm going to separate each one of my rows and columns. And then I'm going to put my row and my column in. My row and my column. I'm going to separate the row and column with a, with a comma. And to make sure that I get the right thing in the very beginning, the one that didn't start with a clone, I need to start over here when I'm doing this debugging and set the debug message. I know this guy's zero, 00, so let's go ahead and just put that in. Zero, 00. That's the text that we're going to start with. Now what I would expect if I run this, and I really was creating all the things that I, I think I'm creating, is this debug message should show up and it should say 0, comma 0, because it's row and column, and then it would go to the next one, a dash, and that would be 0, comma 1, dash, 0, comma 2, dash, 0, comma 3, and then I get to the end of that row, and then it should be 1, comma 0, that's exactly what I hope it does until it gets through all the tiles. So let's see if that is in fact the case. I'm going to put the debug message over here so we'll see what it's doing as we run. I'm going to hit stop, make this bigger so you can see it as well, and I'm going to go ahead and run my program. Uh, when I do that I'm going to click on this button small, and yes actually I'm seeing exactly what I was expecting to see. I see 00, zero then 0, 01, then 02, zero then 03. One zero. That means that all my clones are being created, so that's not the problem. So let's go back to our script and see what the problem could be. If it's not the clones that are being created, then we have another issue. And that issue, I believe, now that I'm looking at it, I can take this debug message out of there again. 
I believe that the issue that we have is this guy right here, this show. What happens when I run and run this program right here? It says, well, I'm working on the very first one, the, the guy in the upper left-hand corner. And I'm saying, go ahead and create a bunch of clones of me. And right now, when I go to create those clones, I'm set as hidden, not as shown. And I've gone ahead and I've created all those guys and I've put them in the X and Y position, but none of those guys did I say show to. I only told the first one to show. So I have a little bit of problem. I could very easily have just done this. Make sure that guy shows. Let's, let's try this again. I'm not setting the debug message anymore, so let's go ahead and take him out for the time being and hide him from the view by clicking that. I believe this, this should make these guys show up. If we hit that, yes, boom, we have that shown up. So we've, we've figured out what our problem is. And in, in between the, the time that we were doing our last chat and the, and the first one, I actually noticed that uh, what we were doing when we were cloning, we had it kind of looking like that. It, what, what this was doing is saying for every valid tile we have on our board, starting in the upper left and going to the bottom right, go ahead and create a clone of that particular tile. And I was, I was realizing that the, the first problem we might have had is that we were going one too many because we don't actually want to create a clone of this bottom right hand corner one, right? Where would that one show up? Uh, it would show kind of off the screen. Yeah, uh, we'd probably only see a little tiny bit of it. It would show up in the next row down, down over here. I realized, uh, first of all, that we shouldn't be doing that. So I created this condition right here. If you look at it, it's an if condition that says, if my column is the very last column and my row is the very last row, well, in that case, uh, we don't want to create a clone of ourselves. So this not here says, if those two things aren't true, that's when we created the clone. Only when those two things only when those two things are not true. So everyone before that, except for the last one, that's when we actually create the clone. Okay, And it does look like everything is working now. We've got all of our tiles that are laid out exactly where we want them to be. But I'm still not entirely satisfied with this. I have a pretty fast computer that we're running on. This is a good computer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because it's a good computer, it, it makes it look like all those things happened all at once. But if you, we were actually running this on a slower computer, if you think about what's going on here, what it was actually doing is it's creating one of these clones, it's putting it up there, and then it's showing it, and then it's going to the very next clone, and it's creating one of those, and it's showing it. So if it was a slower computer, what I would expect to see is that these guys would pop in one at a time. Up, upper left, then the one to the right, then the next one. I don't want that to happen. I'd like them to go figure out where they all should be and then have all of them show. And I have another reason for doing this. Eventually, we're going to be able to click on these cards and show what, what picture is behind them. And I don't want people to be able to click on these cards and do that until all of them are in place. And we don't have to worry about, if you click on them before they're, before they're visible, nothing will happen. But if we make sure they're all laid out first and they all show up at the same time, uh, then we don't have to worry about someone clicking on it before all the cards are shown up. Which means that we need to keep track of uh, we need to keep track of whether we're laying these out or not. We need to know when, when we're laying them out and when we're not. Uh, in order to do that, we need to create a variable, and I'm going to call it is is creating tile clones. And this is something that all of our program needs to know about because if there's any sort of UI user interface that clicks of anything and we don't want them to be handling uh, those clicks while we're creating tile clones, then everybody needs to know about that. So it's not for this sprite only, it's for all sprites. Uh, but that's okay, we're gonna go, go ahead and keep track of that. And is creating clones is set up here at the top. You see I had this notion before we got here, so I put that guy in already. He's right now set to false. We are not creating any clones right now. But right before we go into create clones, obviously we are creating clones. So let's go in, in here, let's set our is creating clones 
to true. So there we go. This guy is now, he thinks he's creating clones, and we need to know when to stop thinking we're creating clones. Now you might think that I could do that right here. That you could set is creating clones right here to false. But this is not correct. This is not the way Scratch works. When Scratch is creating clones, when you get to this block that says create clone of myself, it goes off to run this code, but it doesn't wait. It doesn't wait for this code to get done. It just starts doing this code too. So it will be going through and doing these things, creating these other clones. At the same time, it's going through and doing these things down here. So if I was a, put here right here, set is creating tile clones to false, I probably wouldn't have even finished my first clone by the time this guy says he's all done. But he's not all done. He still has to make all those other clones. So that's no good. We can't just put it there. We're going to have to leave it inside here somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy. I'm going to he's taking up too much space. Really what we want to do is set this is creating clones to false somewhere inside here. Uh, this condition right here, this if, it's actually checking to see if we're in the very last one or not. So when we are in the very last one, that's when we could set is creating tile clones to false. So instead of using an if, if here, I'm going to now switch this out and use an if then else. So I don't need the not anymore because an else is the same thing as not. If we are in the very last one, which is what that condition says, then I can say stop, we're done. Is creating tile clones is now false again. In all other cases, I want to create a clone of myself. This not here was about the same as that else, so we don't need it anymore and we don't need the if then anymore. Let me make sure that that is working correctly. Let's go ahead and put that guy up at the top. At this point, we should still be popping in one at a time, but I'm keeping track of whether we're creating tile clones or not. Let's go ahead and hit stop and play. Go ahead and click this guy bigger and it says we're not. Oh, I didn't see it turn to true at any point. So let's let's put an artificial pause inside here and I can maybe show you what's going on and why I'm concerned about slower computers. If I put inside here a little delay, say even just one tenth of a second, and we ran this again, I can get up here and I can hit this. And look at those, did you see those pop in? Let's try this one more time. Let's see if you can follow along. Hit play again, small. Oh, but that guy says false, so that's wrong. And I think I know why that's wrong. It's because we never got rid of. We said is creating clones to true, and then we set it to false here. All right. So you saw how that that guy, those guys, kind of pop in. We don't want we, now. What we want to do is instead of showing our tiles one at a time. We want to have them happen all at once at the very end. And all at once at the very end is right here where we're setting is creating tile clones back to false again. So what we want to do is tell all of the tiles to show themselves all at the same time. And how do we do that? How do you tell all the things to do something? We broadcast a message. That's right. You use a broadcast. So we're going to go in here and we're going to broadcast a new message at the very end. Once we say we're not creating tiles anymore, we're going to broadcast a new message which says show all tiles. Okay, and then we have to handle that message. When I receive show all tiles, that's when we're going to show. And this should do the exact same thing I'm hoping when I hit play. Make it bigger again. They're all showing up again. But this time, I think even if I were to put that delay in, a little wait. Uh, where's wait? Wait. 0 0.1 seconds. Stop play. Make it bigger. It waits a little while, then boom. They all pop in all at once. And that's exactly what I want to do. I now have a little uh, variable that's telling me when 
when that layout's happening so that I can not respond to mouse clicks when that's happening and they all popped in at one time no matter how quickly or how slowly the computer is that's running this program is going to run. All right, we're in a much better state now than when we started out. This is where we wanted to be at the end of our last, our last segment, but we learned some good things here. We learned how to do debugging and we can use those debug messages in a lot of different places when things aren't going well for us and we figured out the puzzle of what was going wrong. We were only showing one and now uh, we're not just showing all of our tiles again but we're showing the right number of tiles and they're all coming in at the exact same time. Do you think we're in a good place now? Yep. Yep. Okay so in the next segment we can move on to actually interacting with our game uh, letting those tiles flip over to be the animals and nature symbols that we wanted them to be and maybe get some of the, uh, the gameplay going. Sound like fun? Mm -hmm. I hope you've been following along and trying this out yourself. Uh, bonus points to everyone who figured out all of the problems that I ran into more quickly than I, can, I did. But that's part of the fun of programming and figuring, figuring out not only what's the best way to get our program to work, but when it's not going the way we thought it was, figuring out why that's the case and finding the solution to it. All right, uh, here we are. We're, we're now on the verge of having a game we can play. And I think in just a few more segments, we'll be able to have this game all the way done and we'll have some fun with it. And you can make your own and make it look any way you like it to and have the same sort of fun that we have when we're making these. So good luck with your projects. Uh, keep, keep at it and have, ha have the best time you can coding. Did you have fun today? Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.